Okay, so this video is going to be about the physical and human factors affecting population distribution at the global scale. So first of all, let's just do the definitions. So population density, the average number of people living in a given area. And then population distribution, on the other hand, is the way in which people are spread out in an area. So these are very crucial definitions for the rest of the population topic and what we're about to discuss. So um, we will be discussing distribution for the rest of this presentation. So physical factors can be relief as the population distribution would tend to skew more towards the flatlands which are easier to build on and easier to you know hold host inhabitants then you have climate where places with stable weather are much more likely to attract populations um this can link to agriculture and having an ease of kind of um cultivating crops and such and then vegetation is important because you want to have grassland and you want to have ease of clearance for agriculture and also settlements and kind of building infrastructure you need to be able to you know clear the land for that to live there and then you have soils you need deep and fertile soils in order to um, have stable and economic agriculture Water supply is very important. It must be reliable, stable, safe and adequate in terms of rainfall levels as this can contribute to not only kind of a drinking supply but also also washing and also for agriculture again providing um, nutrition to the inhabitants of the area. Um, and then you have your natural resources which are very important minerals, coal, gold and energy energy again provides for a source of everyday life and then the kind of other minerals and such provide an economic asset to the inhabitants of an area um, he hence um, skewing the population distribution towards these types of areas communication and routes easy to build roads pre-existing established paths and roads flat routes wideness and accessibility all very important for being able to live in an area of course and travel to an area and then on the and then on the other hand we have human factors so this is probably best to separate into economic political historical and social or however you want to do it but this kind of allows you to think of all the different kind of um, areas of human factors so economic factors are agricultural opportunities as this provides income um, innovation and technology of an area might attract people to go there. Tourism industries also attract people to certain areas. Political, government investment um, might be particularly high in an area and provides benefits to the people. Political agreements, one being the EU, which allows people to travel freely around different countries. Government regulation, again, kind of ease of moving and living somewhere. And then historically, there would be the existence of ports and natural harbors, which naturally attract a lot of people as they provide a vessel for trade. And then finally, social, culture, housing opportunities, healthcare, retirement levels. Um, so for culture, it's, you know, maybe some people are used to living um, or with the family or um, all kind of in one certain area. Um, or maybe people like to be spread out, housing opportunities, maybe there's a new um, housing development in an area, um, healthcare provision, retirement levels, again, it's just links to this idea of social factors. So that's all you need to know.